Spidge is a fantasy football game where you can put your managerial skills to the test against other players to win real money prizes. Track player performance live during match days as players complete actions such as passes, shots and many more using Optus stats. The teams with the most points each match day will enter the winning zone, allowing managers to win real money. So, put your managerial skills to the test and download Spitch for free today via the link in the description. Hello FPO managers and welcome back for another video. Today we go over the top FPO managers team selections for game week 7. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. If you haven't already, check out some of the other game week 7 content that we've put out so far. And with that being said, let's jump into the video. So today we're going to have a look at the Consensus 11 by Fantasy Football Fix, which is a combination of some of the best FPL managers of all times teams into one aggregated squad. Combined, these managers boast 80 top 10k finishers, 60 top 5k finishers, and 18 top 1k finishers. So let's take a look at the goalkeeper. The top managers have gone with Sanchez, who looks to be such a nice pick at around four and a half million pounds, as he is probably the best goalkeeper option in the game right now. It is definitely between him and Nick Pope, as they're both getting good clean sheet tally so far, as both of these sides have recorded three clean sheets in their first six matches. With Bournemouth and Crystal Palace as Brighton's next two opponents, I would expect them to continue getting clean sheets in the next couple of weeks, as they have been very well organized by Graham Potter. Progressing on, despite being heavily sold amongst other managers, Trent Alexander-Arnold does remain in this side, as he still has one of the best expected FPL points potential over the coming game weeks. In fact, in the next six weeks, Fantasy Football Fix expect Trent to be the highest scoring defender over this period, so hopefully Liverpool can shore up that defence with a good fixture against Wolves at home in game week 7. There is a double up on the Chelsea defence here in the back line, as Chelsea do have some excellent fixtures coming up, and I really like Rhys James as a pick that's almost essential to have in that defence right now with Chelsea's good fixtures, and also Mark Kukurea could prove to be a nice option as Ben Chilwell did play midweek in the Champions League. There was a little bit of doubt around rotation between him and Chilwell, but it looks to me that Chilwell's going to play the Champions League and Kukure is going to be in the Premier League. So I really like this option as well as he's such a cheap price and a great way to get into that Chelsea defence whilst also offering some good attacking potential. Looking at Chelsea's fixtures coming up in the next six, they only have one match with an FDA rating of over three, which is against Liverpool in game week eight. And outside of that, they've got Fulham, Crystal Palace, Wolves, Aston Villa and Brentford. So for me, the Chelsea defence and Chelsea players in general are probably worth targeting with this very good fixture run, as hopefully under a new manager they can begin to turn their season around. Jao Cancelo gets a start despite having a tough fixture of Tottenham at home, but he is actually found in 100% of the top FPL managers teams. Jao Cancelo has been very impressive for Man City this season and is actually coming off two assists in the Champions League midweek, so hopefully he can get another start against Tottenham at home. Looking to the midfielders, Pascal Gross is here as he looks to be one of the best value options in the midfield right now at around £6 million. He has proven to be such a nice pick for Brighton so far as he does actually have the 7th highest expected FPL points across the first 6 weeks with 36.73. Also his XA figure of 2.24 actually ranks 2nd amongst all players to start this season, only behind Kevin De Bruyne as he has attempted 14 assists. For me, Pascal Gross is one of the most essential midfield picks for the next 2 weeks as Brighton have got Bournemouth and Crystal Palace and since he's on corners and some free kicks as well, plus putting in lots of good balls to his teammates, I think he's such a nice value option in the middle of the park. Currently, Mo Salah does take the captain's armband in this team, as he actually has been captained by around 54% of managers, whereas Haan has been captained by roughly around the other 46. It is definitely a bit 50-50 between the captaincy and vice-captaincy this week, as Salah has a solid fixture of Wolves at home, but Haaland has been playing a lot for Manchester City, and has Tottenham at home as well. For me, I can see why the managers have hold on to him against Wolves at home, as there has been a lot of other players that have got rid of him from the squads after he's been a bit frustrating to start the season. Whilst his actual points return has been a bit frustrating, his underlying stats have still been very strong, as he's still attempted the most assists of any player with 24, and does have the 4th highest expected FPL points across the first 6 weeks, with 37.33. Of course, Wolves have been struggling this season, so there is the potential that this Liverpool side do put up a good performance at home at Anfield, which would hopefully see Salah get back to his goal scoring form. Luis Diaz does make up this Liverpool triple up, but there could be a couple of rotation doubts with him on the weekend, as he did play the full 90 minutes in the Champions League midweek. 
So with Diaz playing a lot of football recently for Liverpool, and of course Jota coming back from injury, there could be some rotation there if potentially Jota pushes out wide and then Darwin Nunes plays through the middle, but we'll have to see how these managers navigate that in the coming days. Saying this though, Diaz did get himself a goal in Liverpool's 4-1 defeat in the Champions League, being one of the only bright lights in this game, and the midfield is rounded out by Gabriel Martinelli. Martinelli is a player that just cannot go anywhere in the squads, as at 6.5 million pounds, he is such great value, as he has taken the 4th most amount of shots out of any player and attempted the 5th most amount of assists. So with Arsenal's good upcoming fixtures, especially in the next 2 game weeks, and also with Everton at home in game week 7, I really like him as a pick as he's almost essential to have in the squads. To the forwards now, Gabriel Jesus has also got that fixture against Everton at home and despite him being heavily transferred amongst managers in general, he does remain in the top FPL managers team. Erling Haaland is the vice captain this week and is Jesus' strike partner. It is definitely a bit of a toss up between the captaincy and vice captaincy this week as Haaland has been an absolute fire for Man City but probably has the harder fixture when compared to Liverpool. Haaland pretty much tops every single key FPL stat as he's taken the second most amount of shots as the highest XG has the highest expected FPL points and has by far the highest FPL points tally so far. So for me I'm slightly leaning towards him as my captain in game week 7. Amongst the top FPL managers, the average team value is 101.3 with 0.3 million in the bank, totaling up for 101.6. And on the bench, it's Ward, Andreas Pereira, Nico Williams, and Archer. So just quickly, if we go over some of the Game Week 7 consensus XI top transfers, number one transfer out is Cancelo, and Lewis Dunk will be coming in for him. The second transfer is Cameron Archer out for Alexander Mitrovic. Obviously, with this forward transfer of Cameron Archer being removed from the squads, this could see a new formation change with three forwards up top instead of the usual two. I can also see why managers are moving on Jao Cancelo, as his points return hasn't been that great recently, and Lewis Dunk being slightly cheaper could be worth the value. Just quickly, if we have a look at some other additional information, there's been an average of zero total hits taken this week across the 12 top FPL managers team. I can understand why managers aren't willing to take hits this early on in the season, as this can deeply affect your rank for later on. Thanks for watching today's video. If you guys want to become a channel member, then click the join button down below and get featured on the members board at the end of the videos, just like Philip Ash here. Also, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to show support for the channel and click the notification bell. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.